Please welcome to the podium Dr. Carolyn Porco with her message. Carl, this one's for you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. No, it's still morning. And thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm very glad to be here, and you will soon see why. Uh, I met Carl also back in 1972 when I was an undergraduate, but came to know him best when we were fellow members of the imaging team on the Voyager mission, which toured the outer solar system during the 1980s. And I have to tell you, those were incredibly thrilling times. Uh, for a young person on her first professional assignment to be there in this historic exploration of the outer solar system and to watch Carl and all the senior imaging team members try to tease out what it was we were seeing for the first time in history on the worlds and among the rings and so on in orbit around Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And uh, it was also quite challenging. I was, after all, the youngest person on the team and many times during those years, I found myself the recipient of Carl's encouragement and kindness. And perhaps he might, must have noticed that I needed it because he often went out of his way to, uh, to offer it. And there's just one example that I think of. Um, I'm remembering a particular team meeting where uh, I was desperately trying to make a point that I'd hoped the other imaging team members would find profound and unforgettable. And in doing so, I gestured so, I gestured so wildly that I smacked the person sitting next to me in the face. And afterwards, Carl came up to me and told me how nicely I had behaved. Um, I don't know, maybe he thought the guy deserved it. But uh, anyway, I have a lot of happy memories like that of interacting with Carl. And some of the best happened when I had the chance to work with him on planning and executing what has become, it is now the famous pale blue dot image of Earth taken by Voyager 1 in 1990 from beyond the orbit of Neptune. And as Carl had described it in a, um, <clears throat> a proposal to the Voyager project, the idea was to take a picture of the Earth awash in a sea of stars. Well, the actual player, pale blue dot picture uh, was not really what we had envisioned. As great as it was, there are no stars. And it ended up showing the Earth smack in the middle of a beam of light that was produced by light scattering in the optics of the camera. Of course, none of this really mattered because it was what Carl had to say about this image and the way that he turned it into a romantic allegory on the human condition that made its name pale blue dot, made that phrase now synonymous with an inspirational call to planetary brotherhood and protection of the environment. Well, since the very begin beginning of my tenure as the leader of the Cassini imaging team at Saturn, uh, I had in mind to do this picture all over again, only make it better. And I thought somewhere along the way, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could take the opportunity of a spacecraft imaging the Earth from a billion miles away and get everybody involved, get everybody to participate in, invite them, let them know ahead of time, at this time, your picture is going to be taken from Saturn and go outside when this is happening and look up and contemplate the utter isolation of our planet in the never-ending blackness of space and appreciate, think about its rarity, its lush beauty and the rarity that it is among the other planets in the solar system and marvel at your own existence and the existence of all of life on Earth. And so it happened. On July 19th of this year, only four months ago, the Cassini cameras were turned to look back at Saturn while it eclipsed the sun to take another pale blue dot picture of Earth. And we had sent out the word, go out and look up and think about this incredible accomplishment of this interplanetary, uh, robotic, uh, interplanetary salute between robot and maker that's about to happen and smile. And so <clears throat> people did that. It turned out to be tremendously successful. 
We got a lot of comments of people. They felt exactly like I was hoping they would feel at the moment our picture was taken. Here's just one of my favorite comments from someone in upstate New York. I've been entranced by this project ever since I heard about it and was determined to join in the celebration. We may not be unique, we may, not be, we may be transient, we may be only flying along on a dust mote in space, but darn it, for 15 minutes, we were there, we were aware, and we smiled. So after much work, today, today, this morning, we are officially releasing the mosaic that was taken of Saturn uh, at the time that the Earth smiled in unison. And so in honor of Carl, here it is, my friends, our gift from all of us on the Cassini Project and NASA to all of you, the picture of... <laughs> the picture of the Saturn system taken as the Earth smiled in return, showing Saturn eclipsing the sun, its main rings backlit by the sun, and this glorious blue ring, which is created by the spray of a 100 geysers erupting from the south pole of the small icy moon Enceladus, shown right there. Enceladus has become, in the eyes of Cassini, the, pro the most promising place in our solar system to examine whether or not life has gotten started. And finally, and I hope this works, we need the movie now, looking over the shoulder of Saturn, a billion miles in the distance, is the pale blue dot of our planet Earth. We need the movie. Let's hope it works. Um, here we go. And we get closer, we see there Earth a billion miles in the distance. And as we get even closer as we could with our high resolution cameras for the first time from the outer solar system, the Earth and the Moon, seen as separate distinct objects. Thank you. As evidenced by your reaction, there is something undeniably powerful about seeing a sight of our own fragile little blue ocean planet as it would be seen in the skies of other worlds. It's a shocking, uncorrupted recognition of ourselves as we truly are. And, uh, and it's a recognition that seems never to fail to move us. And it moves me to think about evolution. I look at this image, and I see our distant ancestors stepping down from the trees and walking upright for the first time onto the African savannas and pausing to look back at the forest from which they came. And I see a species that is positively unyielding in its pursuit of knowledge and brave in its longing to grasp the meaning and the significance of its own existence. And finally, <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. I, I can't help but look at this image and see the very best that humanity has to offer. We are beyond question, the troubled and warlike inhabitants of one tiny little dot, but it serves us well to remember that we are also the thinkers, the dreamers, and explorers who took this picture. One world clear across interplanetary space to another. And to be so small and reach so far is what makes us the incredible, the extraordinary citizens of planet Earth. And as Carl himself told us over and over again, there is sufficient spiritual nourishment in that to last all of human existence. And so, in honor of his groundbreaking contributions to the genre, I want to personally dedicate this image to Carl Sagan. Carl, wherever you are right now, somewhere out there in the cosmos, no doubt, this one is for you. The Earth awash in a field of stars, just like you wanted, 
and billions and billions of thank yous for your friendship and support. It's been my pleasure.